Newton's second law of motion. Let's begin by recalling that according to Newton's first law, an object doesn't change its velocity unless it is acted upon by a non-zero net force. Now, how does that object respond to a force when it is applied? The way in which force affects the motion of an object is described by Newton's second law of motion. Here, the net force acting on the object is equal to the mass of the object times the object's acceleration. So when a net force is applied to an object, the object accelerates. The word net that we use is just another way of saying total. Later on uh, in this unit, we'll discuss how to uh, combine forces and calculate net force. But right now, let's just think of it as the force on the object. Now that we've identified force, it'd be interesting to know what units we should use to measure it. There's one defined within the SI system, which is called the Newton, named after none other than Sir Isaac. But what exactly is a Newton? In the past unit, in kinematics, we talked about distance units being meters and time units being seconds, but how does all that relate to force? Well, I think we're already pretty familiar with the fact that mass is measured in kilograms, and we'll certainly discuss that in more detail shortly. And as we know from the last unit, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. So we can relate, using Newton's second law, the force and mass and acceleration. So if we use the unit Newton on the left, and we substitute the units for mass, kilograms, and acceleration, meters per second, on the right, what we get is this relationship that the Newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. 